How have you survived in all this radiation? Today we are returning to Fallout 4 and continuing our downward spiral into seeing how far our region locked insanity can go by tackling the most challenging and interesting location so far in this series, the Glowing Sea. Typically reserved for mid to late game adventures, the Glowing Sea is a bright green cesspool of some of the most difficult enemies in Fallout 4. This is also a massive change in tone for the series, it's usually about a major town or a city and making what fun we can with the characters and stories that already exist there. There's never any pressure other than the internal measuring stick of am I doing something funny, will this make a funny video? There's not a whole lot to laugh at in the glowing sea and starting at level 1 with no equipment and essentially a countdown to your death, there's little room to breathe and even less room for mistakes that pile on like debt over time. So join me and I'll act as your guide as you go from desperate nude sprinter to master of the wasteland in an effort to answer the question, can you play Fallout 4 without leaving the glowing sea? <laughs> Ah, the calm before the storm. You know, we usually go through a game's intro, but I'll try and be quick this time around because there's so much more we need to cover. I mentioned it earlier, but the Glowing Sea is nothing like any of the other locations in this series, so it's important to get character creation right. Nate, canonically, has a military background, so it only makes sense that we try and survive in a wasteland crawling with mutated monsters as Nora canonically a lawyer. It doesn't make sense, and I don't feel obligated to explain it, but this is a big deal because it marks the first time that a woman has played the lead role in this series. I'm a good mom in every single one of my videos. I'm tired of people telling me that I don't take care of my NPCs. I do a fantastic job. So to the greater than 10% of my audience consisting of women, I hope my nasally Midwestern American accent doesn't take away from this historic moment for you all. I'm doing this for equality, and not because of Nora's dump truck ass. Seven strength for a decent melee damage buff, because in my head at the time, resource management is going to be important, so if I'm able to gain XP without wasting ammo, that'll be pretty big for me early on. Endurance is incredibly powerful in Fallout 4, so I jacked it up to 8, giving us an extra 40 starting HP and an extra 4 HP per level up. It also decreases the rate at which our action points drain from sprinting. Charisma in Perception I set to the absolute minimum. I have no love lost for Perception at level 1, but we'll learn later on that leaving Charisma this this low was such a mistake. It is so much more important than I thought it would be. Intelligence at 2 because I'm planning on using the idiot savant perk a lot and the lower it is, the more we can get that XP bonus. Agility and luck at 4 and 5 respectively. I'm indifferent to either of these, though in hindsight I wish I placed luck a few points higher for some more critical hits. Once your class is set, finish up the intro, watch your hubby's skull empty, drop everything from your inventory and console command over to the glowing sea. Now it gets real. Oh shit. Okay, that's already a lot of radiation. I mean, it's moving quickly. Oh, great start. Fantastic start, Nora. You're gonna have to get going. Okay, I need something to kill that rad scorpion for me. Shit, there's raiders. I'm just gonna run right through. Come after me, rad scorpion. Oh, they're gunners. Oh, that's bad. Oh, this is all terrible. <laughs> Shit. Right, I'm gonna go the other direction. Well, there's like a church over here. Let's run over to this church. Let's just get to this church. Oh no. Uh, okay, that's a lot of feral ghouls. Hey, didn't mean to go. Oh, shit. Go, Nora. Go, Nora. Don't. Don't. You know, maybe I would have been better off going into this with a plan. Or at least some basic research, because it took another 20 minutes of. to stumble upon the beacon of light, the hope that was needed to start this journey off properly. Oh, he's coming. Come on, Nora. Is this it? Is this it? Power armor! This might have been a dumb decision. Go! <laughs> Run! <laughs> You're gonna want to aim for this cave, aptly named. Oh, that's just a cave! It's a regular old cave! But the power armor is keeping us alive for sure. We're definitely still getting radiation, but we're resisting a little bit. Oh, God. 
Okay, let's not, <laughs> let's not bother Mr. Deathclaw. Things are still dire, completely screwed even, but at this point for me, it felt like the clouds were parting. Hope had existed in what I thought was a hopeless attempt at forcing the glowing sea into this series. With a suit of power armor, you've bought yourself some time to no longer be the Wasteland's plaything, if only for as long as one fusion core will last you. I guess I'm just gonna go into this giant technology triangle. I didn't know that the first pyramids were built in Boston, but <laughs> today I learned. But that's what this entire playthrough comes down to. Time. Caps are the standard currency of Fallout, but in the glowing sea, you'll be operating on the clock that starts each and every time you leave home. The strategy will change and evolve over time, but at the start, finding ways to mitigate that and give yourself more time by stocking up on things for future use will be your saving grace. I came into this with zero preparation because I find it more fun that way, but that doesn't mean that you have to. Now you've bought yourself some time, but what you really need are supplies, experience, and breathing room. The Sentinel site provides a fair amount of it, but it won't be easy. Alright, well it looks like they're very welcoming me. See, they've put on the giant orange welcome alarms. <laughs> New visitor detected! Everybody, say hello kindly. Right now, I've got about 5% health left. That's six of my 120 starting HP if you're keeping score at home, so my shopping list is fairly simple. Radaway, stim packs, food if they have it, and basically any other junk, so long as I get some health back, but more importantly, some time back. And wouldn't you know it, we found some Radaway, we found a stim pack, there's even a magazine providing a passive plus five bonus to radiation resistance. Yes. Results may vary, but I found myself with a good chunk of health back and ready to take on whatever enemies this place would throw at me. Remember when I said mistakes pile on like debt over time? Every decision that you make in combat is crucial. Which enemies will you target? When should you quick save? When should you retry a fight because you took too much damage? Should you burn a stim pack now, eat some food, or maybe look for a bed and do none of the above? As this series continues, I'll dive deeper into this. Hell, we'll even learn enemy attack patterns so that we can optimize our let's call it our wasteland bankroll for now. In the main room is a few feral ghouls and mole rats. They aren't much of an issue, but getting your first official kills under your belt is definitely satisfying. The best thing in this room is a Child of Adam clothing set you can find in the corner, so while it's sad that we have to say goodbye to Nakey Nora, an extra 20 rad resistance is sure to help us out. Don't get too comfortable though, because danger lurks in the tunnels at the end of the room. Oh god. Bring it on. Insert, insert doom music. Come on, motherfucker, I want it! Yeah! Bring it on, bitches, come on! This is my pyramid. I gotta be honest with you guys, going from feeling like my back's against the wall earlier to now smashing zombie face with my fists was probably the greatest feeling I've ever had recording one of these videos. Also, not sure if you caught it, but we did in fact level up just now. Given how dire our situation still is, which perk do you think we should go with first? Did you say cannibalism? No? You didn't? Well, uh, that's what my dumbass picked at first. Okay, can't eat feral ghouls. Thank Christ I had a save point here. There's no wrong answer for which perk to take first, except for cannibalism. I went with Idiot Savant because I know I can likely handle the rest of this dungeon pretty easily, and with Intelligence at 2, I have a 10% chance at getting triple XP anytime I gain XP. It's not the most balanced perk, though, because you can just reload your save and try to get it to activate on enemies worth a lot of XP. Didn't work. Now is it worth going back and redoing that fight until it hits? Come on, we're gonna get this to activate. Damn it! If I end up one kill away from getting to level three, ah oh, shit! Fuck. Oh my god! 
got it, and we got that. Yes, we got it to activate, which is fantastic news. We're in a great spot now. Well, we would be if it wasn't for the fact that we just ran through every single healing item we had, and we used VAT so many times our power armor now has just over 25% power left. Regardless of all that, level 3 feels nice. I suggest taking the rad resistance perk for another plus 10 bonus. Now that you're back out in the waste, you're going to want to make your way to the Crater of Adam, a settlement of, surprise, religious zealots. They dedicate their lives to worshipping the filth that they live in. I can't be too hard on them though. It's nice to know that there are others out here living a life of super mesothelioma. It's important to get there because A, they have a traitor in town so we can see how the economy of a nuclear crater will treat us, and B, nothing wrong with getting a new fast travel spot. At least we got a fighting chance, you know? Damn, these bastards have a lot of health. How much damage can I do to it? None. <laughs> well, let's just watch ourselves die in slow motion. We might as well, let's just soak it in. Let's appreciate it. Ow. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, we got him on the ropes. I'm Mike Tyson. Woo. Come on, block it. Block it. He's about to back up into his buddy. That is the opposite of what I need right now. I can't be taking on two at once. This is an unfair, unsanctioned boxing match. Play by the rules, boys. Fucker. Damn it. Oh, uh, two in a row, two in a This is turning into a little bit more of a grind than I expected. There's an entire army of feral ghouls right here. This is not good. <laughs> well, here we go, buckle up. This is the Super Bowl. Oh man, now, I didn't say it'd be easy, but this is our first time taking the fight to the enemy out in the waste rather than within the confines of an underground base. We've learned what we can and can't reasonably take on in a fight so far though, a single rad scorpion is easy to stun lock and punch repeatedly, while multiple is a bit tougher unless the game completely breaks. What? what? <laughs> Why? What? Ha did I just kill it by landing on it? What's going on? <laughs> Where do I go? I'm in the vortex. Wait, I'm doing damage by landing on it. Okay, it's dead. And we can fast travel. <laughs> we got out of there. <laughs> it just works. Flying bugs are a pain in the ass and they always will be and ghouls need a little bit more than punching to handle as a big group. I can't really understate how many rad scorpions there are. It feels like you're playing through an advertisement campaign for Raid, not Shadow Legends the Bug Spray. Because every 30 seconds and almost always at the most inconvenient time you'll hear. I ended up eventually making my way to the crater of Adam, beaten, bruised, and with no battery left in my suit. My people! I found my home! Good to see you, brother. How are you, Foster? Oh, I forgot that there were people here! Word of Adam's glory must be spread to all. Yes, yes, glory and all to Adam. This is no place that the forsaken or untouched merely pass through. Ma'am, I'm down for whatever religion you got, as long as you can get me some supplies and save me. You may seek Brother Ogden. I know I keep going back to this whole mistakes add up like debt thing, and it probably feels by now it's getting a little bit old, but here's where it really kicked in for me. When I first got the suit, I was always sprinting, I was using vats with the only available fusion core in my suit, so now the suit's basically useless. I'm also going to get financially nailed by any rat away I might purchase, which won't be a lot because I gave myself the charisma level of a bad late night host. 268 for Radaway. Oh my god, come on. So now I'm in a position where I have roughly 30% health, I just spent a ton of money on one Radaway, my power armor is dead, and I'm only level 3. Where do we go from here? We're gonna leave our power armor back there, we can always fast travel to go get it later. There it is, okay, I already spot his cave on the compass, so we might be able to get there. Fuck me! I hate to cut off this awesome tune, but I need to point out some things. Anyone who's played through Fallout 4 should remember Virgil's cave from the main story. This is going to be our temporary base of operations as we try and crawl out of the hole that we've put ourselves in. Is that a friendly turret? Hi, hi, lonely outsider who's scared of death. You have no clue how happy I am to be here. <laughs> I am so happy to be here. We need to make use of everything at our disposal here. That includes stealing everything that we can, crafting anything that might help, quickly jumping out into the waste and back to the cave to save time. We need to actually research the location we've decided to live in. It's time we take this seriously and girl boss the fuck out of the glowing sea. 
Thank you. That's good for healing. I thought we were cool. I, you know, I thought we were friends and you just had to blast me. <laughs> I have very, very limited time. So I'm gonna go back to the Children of Adam spot, talk to the vendor, and sell everything that I have for as much rat away as possible. Then it is my place to aid you. No fucking way. Wait a minute. Three glowing fungus. I know for a fact there was some glowing fungus out here. It's the glowing sea. Glowing fungus has to be here. Oh. <laughs> so what we're doing right now is we are waiting for 20 in-game days to try and get the sentinel site that we originally cleared out to clear back out. We need this to work out. We are desperate at the end of our ropes here. Uh, not stim packs. I need rad away. How much health do I have? Seven. <laughs> I have seven health. This is a brand new room. God! <laughs> Damn it, man. I got my head ripped off. Radex, is the Radex going to protect us enough to get us to the merchant of the Children of Adam and sell a ton of stuff that we have? Why so much radiation? Come on, get over the junk. Okay, we're in the conversation. Really wish I didn't have to sell my junk, but the junk has to go for now. I can get two. I can maybe get two. How close was I to dying? Zero. I have zero health. <laughs> All right, Atlantic offices. Notable loot. There's a fusion core in the generator on the roof, and it looks like it's to the left of cave. If we can fast travel to cave, we might be able to grab glowing fungus, and then we want to get over to Atlantic offices. We'll hit a level up at some point, so maybe we try and discover Capsize Factory as well. Capsize Factory has eight Radaways. Glowing fungus. I need one more glowing fungus, and we can get one more Radaway. Boom. There we go. Okay, another red scorpion right there. Holy Christ, running around here is terrifying. There we go. Okay, we've got them both on the map. They're both marked. Let's try and discover it if we can. Capsize factory, thank you. Okay, can we get up onto this roof? This looks slanted. Can we take this and climb it up? No. Whoops. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have gone this way. Unless the elevator. Going up, on the roof, on the roof, fusion core, got it. Oh, oh my God. And off the roof, Nora goes. I'm honestly glad that I died there. We get the quick save back. Dodge that dickhead. Yeah, good luck getting down here. Get it, grab the fusion core, and I'm out. I'm out, I gotta run, uh, break the encounter hopefully. Yes! Oh my gosh, it let us fast travel. I did not think we were gonna be able to get out. Full charge. We finally clawed out of the dire situation we were in, mere seconds away from this run being effectively dead. Now, we have life. We know what not to do. We have a better gauge on our environment and multiple critical locations around the map we can fast travel to. At this point, I hit level four and I took the medic perk, which I wish I could have had earlier, to be honest. This is gonna bump the effectiveness of Radaway and stim packs from 30% to 40%, making the money or time that we spend obtaining these in the future stretch much further. I hope I was able to give you guys a good idea of what starting fresh in the glowing sea with absolutely nothing feels like. As our channel reaches 100,000 subscribers, I can't help but say, Thank you again to everybody who watches the channel. It is an absolute privilege that I get to tell my dumb stories and goofy jokes for you guys online. And 100,000 to me is an absolutely mind-blowing number that if you told me a year ago we were going to reach eventually, I would have probably slapped you or cried. Or, oh no, this is an accidental ear reveal. Hold on. <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys the rest of this adventure because there will be multiple parts, which is a first for the channel. If you'd like spoilers of upcoming videos in this mini series contained within another much larger series, I'll have those posted on my second channel as we get closer to those coming out. But we're not quite done here yet. I have a fully charged suit of power armor and eight right away with my name on it. And if you want an idea of what the confidence level flowing through somebody who's gone through the shit that I did to get to this point looks like, Romer, Feral Ghoul, Feral Ghoul, Feral Ghoul, Feral Ghoul. I have to make a risky play here. 